This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy, and that's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, a wonderful neo-noir starring one of our greatest actors in a supporting role. Let's check it out. Today's film is After Dark, My Sweet, from 1990. It's about two hours long, in color. I don't want to give too much away about the plot. Basically, it's about a former boxer who sort of wanders into the lives of these two people and becomes involved in this kidnapping scheme. It was directed by James Foley, who's probably best known for um, uh, At Close Range and Glen Gary Glen Ross. The main character is played by Jason Patrick, who's known for The Lost Boys and a film called Rush. Um, his father, by the way, I didn't know this, was Jason Miller, who was the young priest in The Exorcist. Um, this was a passion project for Jason Patrick. He was not very happy with the roles he was getting in a lot of films, but when he came across this material, the book it was based on, he really uh, pursued it and, and got it made. Um, his entrance at the beginning of this film is one of the weirdest entrances I've ever seen for a character. Basically, he kind of stumbles out of this big rock mountain, uh, almost like uh, out of a cave. We can assume he spent the night there, and he walks uh, very in a sort of disfigured way, and the way he holds his, his facial expressions and the way he holds his head, uh, there, you can tell there's something uh, physically and mentally not right with this guy, and he's clutching this sort of soiled rolled up brown grocery bag. We can assume that's his uh, suitcase. That's where all, all his belongings are. Um, he's in every scene in this film. And really the story is told from his point of view, uh, including a voiceover narration by him. Now in one of the extras in this uh, on this disc, Jason Patrick says he doesn't really like voiceovers. He thinks they're kind of a cheat. I'm kind of a sucker for them myself. But he feels in this case, it really worked and that it was appropriate. Um, the, the female lead is played by Rachel Ward. She plays a woman named Faye, and she's kind of a mysterious character. We're not sure what she's all about. And uh, Bruce Dern plays uh, a guy uh, known as Uncle Bud. What a perfect name for a Bruce Dern character, right? And Uncle Bud, um, boy, we do not trust him from the beginning. We look at one, this guy, he's, he's, he's got to be a con man right away. That's the feeling you get immediately from him uh you know is, has he ever been bad in a given a bad performance in a film bruce stern i mean some of my favorites include nebraska and a film called smile and the burbs i think he was great in all of those but he can play almost everything i think um, this was based on a novel by jim thompson very well respected crime novelist uh, very prolific and i found out also i didn't know this that he helped write two uh, great Kubrick films, uh, Paths of Glory and The Killing, but I don't think he received credit for them. I think this film definitely qualifies as being a neo-noir. I don't want to get into a big discussion about what that is and whether something qualifies as that. I think sometimes they use that film noir label to market things, but um, you know, somebody like Eddie Muller is you know, light years beyond my knowledge and authority on that kind of subject, but I do think this qualifies as a neo-noir, and I'll give you some reasons why. And what I mean by that is it has a, those film noir characteristics from those in the golden age from the 40s and 50s, but it's a newer film, and it's set probably in a uh, more modern setting like this one is. But here are some reasons why I think this qualifies as a neo-noir. First of all, um, as I was watching this, about halfway through, I thought, you know, this film... The plot and the dialogue and even the acting could fit into a 40s or 50s noir. There's really, that I can remember, uh, not any swearing in the film. There's one a nude shot. You see Jason Patrick's butt in one scene. That's about it. But there's no gratuitous nudity. There's no gratuitous violence. I think you could transplant this into a 40s or 50s film noir and it would work as a solid film noir from that golden age. Um, secondly, there's a constant feeling of dread throughout this film that you know things are not going to end well. And more importantly, the main character knows this too, and yet he just keeps on going. He knows that fate is involved, but he's compelled to see this thing through the end for better or for worse. He's just got to keep continuing. Um, there are also some 
mysterious main characters. In fact, I would say every character in this film is um, questionable. We don't know what their real story is, what their backstory is, if we can trust them, if what they're saying is true or not. It even goes for the main character. We're not sure. More is revealed about him as we go along, but uh, even some other supporting characters, we're not too sure. We're always kind of off balance about who these people are and what their agendas are. Um, the main character, like in many noirs, not all of them, is, is mysterious. He is also a former boxer. There's a lot of film noirs involving boxing. And uh, there are some uh, a, a few flashbacks, very brief, of him in this particular boxing match. And we don't know why we keep going back to that. But by the end, we, we understand why that boxing match he was in was so important. Um, so, you know, again, just like a good noir, you know, who can you trust? Can we trust anyone? Can we trust the narrator? You know, everybody is kind of suspect in this. And in addition, there's a crime like there is in so many noirs. In this case, the kidnapping scheme. And, you know, whenever there's a crime, most times in a film noir, things are not going to go as planned, right? Now, visually, I would say this is does not have a very noirish look to it. The visual style is very good, but I wouldn't categorize it as noir. It's in color, which some noirs are, of course. Um, it's but it's pretty brightly lit. I think most all of it takes place in the daytime. Um, the location is not a big city. It's in uh, Palm Springs, California, which, if you're not familiar with it, is a desert community. And some noirs do take place outside of big cities. I know that, like even westerns too. But, uh, you know, it doesn't have that. You're not going to watch this and think, oh, that really looks like a noir. But all those other characteristics of character and plot and the feeling of it definitely, definitely um, qualify this as a neo-noir. So for all the reasons I gave, these feeling of dread, the performances, very tight script, Really enjoyed this film. Solid neo-noir. I'm going to give it four and a half boxing gloves out of five. Now, what's on this disc? Well, this is part of a larger box set. Let me get to that in a second. This is an imprint disc. Um, visually, as far as picture quality goes, it's okay. It didn't knock my socks off. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's good. Let's just say it's good to very good. Audio was more of a problem. The dialogue was turned way down. Now, like I've said before, I don't have a big setup here. I don't even have a sound bar, much less surround sound. I'm using the TV speakers, and usually they're fine for me. Sometimes I use uh, AirPods to listen to stuff, but the dialogue was really low, so I had to put the subtitles on, turn it up a little bit. That was a, that was a bit of a problem as far as the uh, audio quality goes. Um, there are several extras on this disc. There are four interviews, one's with James Foley, it's about a, the director, it's about a half hour long. That was my least favorite one. He goes off, goes off some, on some tangents. He is a little repetitive and kind of an odd character, so kind of uncomfortable to watch him, I thought. Um, there's an interview with um, Jason Patrick, very good. He's a serious guy, he takes his craft seriously. That's about 17 minutes long, he talks about the genesis of this project. He was not happy, like I said, with some of the roles he was getting before. So this was a, a real dream uh, project for him. Uh, there's an interview with the great Bruce Dern. That's about 12 minutes long. He talks a little, a little bit about his career and um, talks about his experiences with this film. And he explains what a Dernsey is. And then there's an interview with a Jim Thompson biographer. And that's about 15 minutes long too. One great thing about all these four interviews is they show clips um, from the film to uh, visually show you what they're talking about. So for example, there's one uh, part in the Jason Patrick interview where he mentions how James Foley always or almost always showed the Jason Patrick character's uh, hands in the frame of the film because he was a boxer and he, the way he holds his hands, the, they're, they're deadly weapons and they're, they're kind of a threat all the time because you never know if he's going to use them or not. Um, there are also two commentary tracks, which I did not listen to. Um, so this is part of a uh, larger box set, which looks like this from Imprint. It's called the After Dark, the Neo-Noir uh, Cinema 
collection one. Um, I've already ordered collection two. And there are six films on here. As you can see, I've seen, I think, about three of these, but it's been a long time. I hadn't seen After Dark My Sweet since it was released in 1990, so I didn't remember a whole lot about it, except that I liked it. And I had read the book uh, way before that, too. Um, this is um, still available here and there. Pretty pricey. It's going to be over 150 bucks. I didn't pay quite that much for it, but it's not cheap. One reason is you have six films. You have this really hard box here. And you have this 60-page uh, booklet, which is very nice. It has uh, photos from the films, and it's glossy, perfect bound, and it has an essay on each film as well. And uh, so, uh, you know, if you can't uh, find that one or you can't spend that much, you can probably uh, still buy this separate, separately on a different label. You can also uh, check out uh, Tubi. It's, it's streaming on there. You can rent it from the usual streaming services like uh, YouTube or Amazon. And maybe even try your local library since it's been around for a while. So, um, you know, if you would like me to go through some more of these films on this channel, let me know down below in the comments section. Or you can just comment on anything you want to, actually. Uh, you can also leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Thank all of you for subscribing. See you next time.